So you might see today that my belt is not black today, it's a white belt. And that's because I have given up my black belt and I'm now going to be starting back over at white belt. You can see me at the Naga this next weekend. I'll be coming for all the white belts and you'll see me at the Worlds or Novice Open or whatever they have for white belts. I'm going to take it. I'm just kidding. Today what we're going to talk about is white belts rolling with higher belts. So I've gotten a lot of questions recently where higher belts are telling me that they're rolling with these brand new white belts, right? We're going to talk about some of the crazy situations that you may have run in, but some of these crazy white belts that come in that are spazzy, nuts, and they end up injuring them. So they don't like rolling with them. And then I'm getting messages from the other side of the fence where I'm getting these young new white belts that come in and they're like, I don't want to hurt anybody, but it happened, right? And so I'm going to give you an idea on how to roll with brand new people. This is coming from experience from someone that has experienced all the worst stuff possible from a brand new person. I had to learn the hard way. So hopefully I know I, know I do have some higher belts that watch this channel. Hopefully I can give you some of the wisdom that I've learned from getting kicked in the face, elbowed in the mouth and slammed on the mat. This is my lovely sister, Mr. Adam Wilson. Let's jump into the situations and then we'll talk about what to do. So if you are a higher belt or a blue belt, you've probably rolled with white belts and you probably have your own situations that you remember. I'm gonna show you three that have kind of like continuously popped up um, when I was rolling with newer students over the years as a coach and uh, where I took some blows to the face and body. So one of the ones, I don't know what this is, but like you get here and you've got a brand new white belt and you're, he's passing, right? Or she's passing. And then for whatever reason, instead of like maybe switching the hips so that we can stay like, like facing the person, they want to do this like hurricane where they like want to spin, boom, and like try to go around. I swear I've caught so many elbows to that, that, that little spin, uh, so much so that I, I expect it now. So again, I've seen that one happen. Now, the reason why a normal jiu-jitsu practitioner doesn't do this is because, you know, after that happens, you immediately have their back and you can put them in a crucifix and everything else. But they don't know that, and so they try to do it and catch an elbow. The next thing is a triangle. You put someone to a triangle, they've never rolled, or they've rolled a little bit, but they're only really, like, their main experience with jiu-jitsu is from watching, like, MMA and UFC. And what do they do? They, like, want to pick you up and get ready to slam you. And again, I've had several times where I've had guys come in where literally they have the guy up and they're getting ready to bring him down and we have to run over there and stop it before it happens um, even though we've said no slamming they just don't think about it because again they're new they're thinking only thing their only experience because as soon as you tell them hey you're getting ready to slam this guy on his neck he might knock him out it might hurt his neck or whatever you're like oh yeah maybe i shouldn't do that but again that's another one that happens a lot i've seen the last one that i'll share with you guys today is if you're in an open guard passing situation where maybe you're the higher belt and you're on top and you've got a brand new white belt here in the bottom and you're running into the feet of death right here doing this stuff. Again, right there. Happens all the time. I've gotten like my knee buckled, I've been kicked in the nuts, been kicked in the face, mouth, everything, multiple times. So let's talk about what to do in these situations. Let's start with the bottom first, okay? So if you're a higher belt, listen, the thing is, is this is good practice for you because a lot of times we can become very forgetful of what it's actually like to roll with someone that doesn't know jujitsu. Because when we roll with people that do jujitsu, they engage in a certain way. They engage in what we would consider the more technical way. But should you ever be in a situation with an untrained person when you've got to protect yourself, the person's not going to engage you in a technical fashion, right? So you have to learn how to deal with that stuff. Um, and this is just my thought process on it. You know, again, if there's a huge size difference and the worry of injury is there, that could be a, a thing. But assuming there's not a massive weight difference, as a jiu-jitsu practitioner who's a higher belt, you should be able to control the new people that come in off the, uh, off the streets and into your gym to train, right? You should be able to control that. And you want to control which positions you get into. So in my book, basically, when you go up against someone that is not educated in jiu-jitsu, they don't know how to play the game, you go back to the basics. Like we get rid of pretty much the intermediate and the advanced stuff and we go back to like Jiu-Jitsu 101, full guard, half guard, all that stuff. So for instance, if we're playing a guard, I am not going to play, stand up for me first, I'm not gonna play like De La Hiva or any of this stuff here because to me this is just like a, a yeah. I basically treat it almost like it's an MMA fight or a fight where basically anything could possibly happen. It's unexpected. Not that I think one of these newer people is going to try to punch me, but they might fall and elbow me or something. It just might happen. So I treat it like it's a fight. So for me, the guards that I'm going to play, if he is standing, I would be here trying to pull him down. And once I get him down, I'm going to play either a full guard and I'm going to get him tight so that he cannot make space. I will play half guard sometimes. Again, so I can get really tight and get low 
and it's very hard for them to, to really do much to injure me. And in some cases, I'll play a little bit of butterfly guard here where I can get really tight and sweep them, especially if they're bigger. A lot of times it's easier for me to sweep some with butterfly guard, but I'll play those positions. But again, I consider it just like fight. And I would play, I played butterfly guard in MMA a couple times. So again, I keep it like a fight where basically my hands are always protecting my face or I'm really tight. And if I'm not tight, I'm not gonna sit in this range. I'm either gonna be kind of really far away. So it's, I'm either in or out and my hands are always gonna be up to protect for things like the hurricane pass or like an accidental elbow drop or if someone falls on me because it happens a lot. Now on the top, we wanna stay tight. So again, I'm not gonna be out here dealing with like the, the fury of the, of the legs, right? Of the, of the brand new white belt's feet getting up kicked. Cause you gotta think about it, going back to the idea it's a fight, right? I don't wanna get up kicked because that's the thing. So I'm gonna come down and start passing tight. That could be like stack passing here. That could be getting to half guard and then putting some pressure here and staying really tight but I'm getting down low. I'm not gonna stay back there like that, right? Because again, I, I just don't wanna give the space. And it's not to say that the advanced techniques wouldn't work on them, because of course they could, but your risk for injury is higher. Um, you know, the thing is with jujitsu techniques, it's one of these things where if they zig when they should, should zag or whatever, you know, they could injure you. It wouldn't necessarily pass your guard, it wouldn't submit you, it wouldn't anything, but you could start to take damage to your body, which you don't want. Right, so that's why, again, when I play against lower skilled people, they're like brand new people, off the street people, crazy wild people that haven't learned jiu-jitsu very well yet and don't know the reactions, I play basic jiu-jitsu, like fundamentals, really tight, top and bottom, I go back to that kind of stuff and I treat it like a fight. Not necessarily that I'm gonna punch them, but just to expect the unexpected. And then again, when you're going against these people, cut them some slack. We all started at the beginning, right? We all started with nothing. We didn't know what we were doing. And so again, educate them as you're doing it, but keep them tight and teach them both through your ability to control them and control the, and dictate the positions. And then you can sort of tell them, right? Um, but also protect yourself. And this way you don't have to be angry at them and they don't have to feel bad about injuring you. Because again, a lot of times people don't come in when they're injured, they're just trying to be good just like the rest of us, they always want to, they all want to be good. We all want to be, nobody comes into jujitsu because they want to be mediocre, right? So just sharing that with you guys, just a tip from the Schuster to you, right? Um, treat rolling with brand new people as if it was a fight situation, expect the unexpected, be very tight and controlled and be mindful of your position at all times because you don't know what's going to happen sometimes. So that's the chat. Hope that was good for you guys. Hopefully that's helpful to you. I'm finished. Adam. Adam.